Hey guys, my name is Kim and today I'm going to be talking about my process of how I narrowed down colleges and I actually chose my college, Rochester Institute of Technology or RIT, without actually visiting any of the campuses. Choosing a college is one of those first truly life-changing decisions and starts to pave the way for, you know, the direction of your life. So hopefully this video helps. This video is going to be structured in the following way. First, I'll talk about how I narrowed down schools initially, so some primary factors. Then I'll move into some more specific secondary factors that really helped me narrow down my list, you know, so say from like five schools to two schools. Um, and then finally, I'll talk about all the resources and techniques I use and how this all kind of translates back to you guys. So once you've got your list of schools that you've been accepted to, you're going to need to narrow them down to the ones you actually want to go to. This is where the primary factors are going to come into play. We're going to go through these, you know, kind of quickly because you've probably already researched them since you were initially applying. And plus the secondary factors are really where the good stuff is at. So first and foremost, academics. What opportunities do each of these schools provide academically that other schools don't? Do they have what you want to do? Do they have what you want to major in? And if you don't know that, you know, do they have room to explore and provide flexibility for you to do that? For me, coming out of high school, I knew that I wanted to do something with coding as well as design, but I didn't want to do computer science because I absolutely hated math. But after some research, I found that a lot of schools had, you know, a mix of these topics for a program, but it was within their like individual study school and I didn't want to like make up my own thing. I wanted a set program degree. And that's when I found something called Human Centered Computing at RIT, which perfectly combined these two things as well as like an opportunity to do research. Um, or I also really liked that RIT had a lot of different minors as well as some unique majors. So that, you know, shows that they had flexibility in their academics. So the next is cost and location. How much have each of the schools given you in financial aid? How much was tuition initially? And then how much are you getting, you know, in outside scholarships? What are the cost of meals and the cost of living in dorms? And did that factor into that? For me, um, I also had to consider, you know, the cost of transporting things, which I kind of forgot about because I came from Minnesota to New York and then also the cost of flying back and forth, like to go home for breaks. But with RIT being a private school, I got a lot of aid um, and it was oddly less expensive for me to go all the way here than it was for me to attend with all my scholarships at my in-state school. Third is career opportunities. So, you know, the whole reason we're going to college from high school and, you know, to plan out the rest of our future. What career opportunities do each of these schools have that others don't? Are there any notable alumni? And do companies that you want to work at, you know, recruit students from these specific schools? For me, it was important that, you know, schools had a career fair and a lot of my accepted schools did have one. But what set RIT apart was their co-op and internship program, which right now has allowed me to do, you know, software engineering, design, as well as management internships at big and small companies, um, all within my major and the time I'm here. Last but not least, consider your own must-haves and don't-wants. Some people have been involved in a sport, activity, or club or are just really passionate about that and you'd want to go to a school that caters to these activities and has support for these hobbies. For me, uh, I really liked ice, ice skating at home, so RIT was a big hockey school. I also knew, like, one of my must-haves was not even an interest or a hobby. It was just that I wanted to be out of state to explore an adventure in a place for a little bit. Some people want to be in Greek life, you know, others are really into esports, so make sure your school has support for those things. Okay, now on to some secondary factors and things to consider. This is when we really get to narrow down and get into the nitty gritty to figure out the vibes of a college. This is like, this is very important. I, I like the primary factors, but like this is like what makes or breaks your decision between two or three colleges. So for the first one, atmosphere and environment. So before we jump into how to get a sense of this at a college without actually visiting, I want to put in a disclaimer that I am not promoting stalking on social media, but like you stalk your crush on there, probably your potential Tinder date, so why not stalk your future college as well? So you should definitely do this with other platforms like Twitter or Reddit, but I'm going to hop on Instagram more for the visuals. I'm on my college's official Instagram page. I'm going to scroll through, check out what they post, check out what they've been tagged in, as well as any videos they have. And then I'm going to go into their followers, see who they're following. A lot of times schools will be following clubs and whatnot, so I knew I was interested in hockey, so I looked into that. There are also plenty of other sports. If you're in a specific college, a lot of those have their own Instagram pages and you can check out what they're up to. RIT is big on posting about careers, so they'll often highlight co-ops and internships students have done. And like I said, there are usually so many clubs and activities at schools, so just make sure that this school has what you want. RIT has a student life page which shows events and things happening around campus, as well as a dining page. And then for this next part on Instagram, I really like to check out the Places tab. This really allows you to see popular places to eat and things to do in the area. 
If you click on a place, you can get a better sense of what there is to do there, how it looks, as well as where it is relative to your college. If you've explored the area on Google Maps, you can also look at places that you already know of. One of my favorite places in Rochester is the climbing gym. So speaking of Google Maps, it is a great way to get to know what your college looks like and the layout of it without actually visiting. You can zoom in and out, check out all the buildings, check out your dorms. And then I love zooming out just to, you know, see what there is to do or eat in the surrounding area. If you like coffee, you know, search for those coffee shops. The last thing I would do is see if your school has an accepted students Facebook group. RIT has one, but it's only for accepted students, so it is private. And this is because these are actual students, you know, in your grade thinking about or have accepted going to RIT. There have already been 17 new posts today, and it's only 9 a.m. This is the place students are starting to introduce themselves, find roommates, as well as just ask questions about anything. I can't show you actual students, but I can show you mine, and also another example of what accepted students are posting in the group. So like I said, great way to get a sense of the atmosphere and other students coming into this college, as well as, you know, getting insight. I recently posted a tour of our college's main computing building in there. Lastly, we've got statistics and size. Now that we've got a lot of, you know, the qualitative data, we got to get in some of the quantitative data to seal it all in. There are three really great resources, aside from the college's website, where you can start to get a look at statistics and reviews. You've probably heard of the first two, Niche and Princeton. You know, they have a lot of stats on diversity, students, campus life, as well as, you know, graduation rate and average salary. Um, but the third one, Campus Real, is where students on that campus, you know, create videos as well as reviews and honest ones about, you know, life on campus. And then tying in with this comes size. You know, there's a huge difference between a school with 3,000 undergraduates versus 40,000 graduates. For me, I found that, you know, a medium school was like the perfect in between. I wasn't lost in a sea of people, but there were always new people to meet. I would run into, you know, the same people, but it was nice seeing those people as I would walk to class rather than like knowing no one or knowing everyone. So now that you've gotten a better idea of the school, even though you haven't actually gone there, you should use your resources and the people who actually are there to find out more. Here's some other things that I did. So I contacted upperclassmen as well as like department ambassadors because I really wanted to talk to people who were currently at the school in the major and see what they thought about classes and facilities and other things. I also talked to local family members and friends who had, you know, siblings who went to the schools or whatnot. Something else I also did was go on LinkedIn to the companies I wanted to work at and look at their list of employees to see if any of them were alumni at any of the colleges. Some of them were from RIT and that was pretty cool to see and some of them would actually, you know, come back and give talks. So I've been able to connect with some of them. So uh, LinkedIn is also a good way, you know, to connect with students who are currently in the program or major you're interested in. So that was all I had for the tips and tricks. I did all this online research stuff, you know, three years ago, so way before COVID was a thing. Um, and I decided not to visit because of time, cost, my parents were working and I just applied to colleges like all over the place. But now you guys have so many more resources, you know, like FaceTime tours, webinars, virtual tours. Due to COVID, all of these resources have become more prevalent and more available to you. I know RIT has a whole list of things that you can sign up for and I'll put that in the description. But choosing a college is really like one of those first big life-changing decisions. You know, it kind of defines the next chapter of the story of your life because it determines who you're going to meet, what opportunities you'll get, and you know, just the atmosphere you'll be in for the next four years. So I hope this video really helped with you and your ideas for decision making. For me, I know that I'm so glad to have chosen RIT because I loved the atmosphere right when I got here. I love the people I've met and you know, I've had a lot of fun as well as you know, figured out my career and that's what college should be. So thanks for watching.